Uh, today, just need a mat, a dumbbell. Um, we're going to do, today's going to be fun. We're going to loosen up the hips, and then we're going to do strength and power development for the legs, and then we're going to do uh, shoulder stability and abs, basically for the rest of the workout. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the uh, story for today, I, I talked a little bit about it on Saturday, but there is a, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a veteran and I served for a few years in Germany and I spent a year in Afghanistan. And uh, there is a, uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Tamerlane, actually he's got Timur, he's actually got lots of names, but he was a conqueror in the 14th century and he uh, took over Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, some of these places around there in the theme of, or in the, in, the, in the style of the Mongol Empire, but he was actually a, a, Muslim, uh, a Muslim leader. And his name, yeah, well, they, the quotes that I've read by him are, uh, they call him Tamerlane. And uh, he, he talks about prep preparedness. And there's a quote that I really love. Who here, is, who has ever, ever been running late? Ever, ever been late? Okay. Um, and uh, this, this helps me get out the door when I'm, uh, when I'm thinking about showing up. Because he says, it's better to be on time with five men than a day late for the battle with 500. Because you, you got no impact on the second, the second day, but if you arrive, you could do something. And uh, I love that because all the time, you know, that I'm thinking about maybe a presentation or uh, or, or a, a networking event or something, I'm like, well, no, the timing's not right. Like, I, gotta, or I need more time to X, Y, or Z, or I'm not ready. But if you just show up with what you got, you can, you can actually have, a, have an impact and, and grow and develop your skill set or whatever it is. But just by being on time, just by showing up at, in the moment, it's huge. So uh, this, this, uh, this conqueror from the 14th century kind of gave me permission to show up imperfectly and, uh, and do what I can do when I arrive. It's a, it's, a, it's a great mindset shift. And if you haven't given yourself permission yet to show up imperfectly, be like my friend Timur. And you don't need to murder 5% of the Earth's population, but you can't just show up. All right, we're gonna do some jumping jacks. For those of you following along at home, give me some speed squats uh, at your own pace. I got the first five, you got the second five. And go! One, two, three, four, five! One, two, three, four, five! One, two, three, four, five. Second set, go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last set. Last set. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, four, seven, four, eight, four, nine, four. Ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, Louder. Seven, Lower, Kyla! One, two, three, four, five! Six, what? Seven, what? Eight, what? Nine, what? Nine, what? Oh yeah. Okay, so it's Monday. We are going to do our hips a huge favor. Give them some love on the floor. So, we're starting out in the shin box position. 
my right leg pointed forward, left foot's kind of behind me, belly button's pointed over that lead knee. And so at first, we're just gonna roll back and forth. So my feet are gonna stay in the same position. Right now my right hip is externally rotated, my left hip is internally rotated, then we're gonna switch. We're gonna go flip it over and let those hips just feel so the feet stay in the same spot, Reba. So we're gonna leave the feet there and then we're just gonna push, yeah. So yeah, what has to happen, uh-huh. So keep, yeah, the, there's, a, there's these two touch points, yep. And then without, if the feet just stay in the same place. So you, you, are, you are gonna change directions, you're gonna face the other way. So go slow, keep the feet in the same spot, stop sliding. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Now, hands up. <laughs> Not so easy meow, is it, Kyla? <laughs> Oof. Alrighty then. But just that little bit, just that little bit of motion, you're really waking up your hips, greasing the groove. Now we're gonna to continue to let them breathe a little bit. So I'm gonna take that back leg, I'm gonna stay up, I'm gonna lift that back leg up off the ground, lock out the quad, swing it all the way around, keep that toe pulled back, bring it all the way back, and then I'm gonna set it down behind me. If you can do that, you're doing awesome. If you're like Bob and you're getting a big cramp in the TFL, that's okay. That's okay, we're just, we're, we're waking that TFL up, giving it a chance to move. So we're rocking and rolling here. We're just gonna do three reps on the left, three reps on the right. Ugh. Yeah, you can feel your abs really firing up to, 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 to get in there. Now I'm gonna switch it. My right leg is going to lift. I'm going to try and stay upright. Back out that quad. Bring it all the way in. All the way back. Setting it down. Lift. All the way back. Setting it down. We're going to do three reps there. You can use the ground. You can push off the earth. You can grab your knees. Keep from wiggling around. Woohoo! All right, now we're gonna be up on the four point position here. And we're gonna draw some big circles with our knee. So my elbows are gonna stay locked, so this movement has to come from the hip. So I'm gonna do big circles. I'm drawing a circle on the chalkboard here with my knee, front to back. We're gonna go five clockwise. Once you get to five, you're gonna reverse it and go counterclockwise. Elbows stay straight. And it's normal for one side to be more challenging than the other. So give, it, give yourself time to play. Switch to the other side. Five clockwise, five counterclockwise. Make sure that knee gets up to hip, hip height. That's really what we're aiming for. So if you're finding resistance like I am on my left side, that's good. You're trying to push into that resistance to loosen up that groin and that low back. Warming up those glutes. So we're gonna do a groin stretch and uh, we're gonna start with the frog, the frog version. So I'm kicking my feet out and I'm squeezing the earth as soon as I find some tension. So I'm gonna rock back and forth. Some of us have a lot of hip mobility like Bootsy over there doesn't mind getting low. I'm pretty tight so this is tough for me. So I'm gonna squeeze the earth for five, four, and as I'm squeezing, I'm pushing my belly out and breathing into my abs, flexing my abs, stabilizing that pelvis from the top. Two, one, relax. Opening up that groin just a little bit, letting that, those knees slide apart. I'm gonna bob back and forth just a hair to find that tension point again, and then when I find it, I'm gonna breathe in 
and squeeze the earth again for five, four, belly's tight, three, pressure, two, one, and then rest. And then open up those hips, ah, zang. Now we've done that. We're gonna squeeze the knees together, come out of that stretch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over to the Cossack stretch. We're gonna rock back and forth. And what I'm doing is not only am I stretching the groin, I'm also stretching my foot. So my toe is curled underneath me and I'm sitting on that heel so that that toe gets to dorsiflex, the ankle gets to dorsiflex, moving back and forth. Once I get to 10 reps, I'm going to lift and tap. So hoisting up that leg. Three, five, six, seven, Then you're going to switch to the other side and do the same thing, kicking it out, rocking back and forth. Yeah. Hopefully, you, uh, everybody here got our invitation to 4th of July. Lift and tap. It'll be fun to be outside. Fun to have a, a outdoor socially distanced workout. Hopefully before it gets too crazy hot. Fourth of July is like the hottest day of the summer, isn't it? Here in Portland, it's like traditionally that's what it is. It's rained. I feel like the last. Huh. I'll take some rain. So we're going to loosen up the neck and shoulders here. Got the, we've been on, on our all fours, so I'm going to pull my shoulders up to my ears, squeeze the shoulder blades together, keeping the elbows locked, pull the shoulders down towards my hip pockets, and then I'm going to push the shoulders away from one another. So I'm, I'm pushing up as far as I can, separating the... Uh, Push it through the pinky, separating the shoulder blades. And then I'm gonna, so now that I've gone to all four points of the clock, I'm gonna do my big shoulder rotations, but I'm trying to keep my neck neutral. So I don't wanna look up, I don't wanna be craning my head forward. So it's challenging, but we're gonna do five clockwise, five counterclockwise rotations. <sighs> it takes me like five or 10 reps just to stop moving my head. So this is a toughie. What we're doing is we're waking up those, that scapula and we're reminding the shoulders that they can move around. From here, we're gonna get into child's pose. And then I'm gonna walk my hands out to the side. So I'm gonna go all the way out to my right and my, my left arm is gonna get tight. Then I'm gonna go just a little bit further and crawl out there with my left. And then I'm gonna breathe into that, into that spot. And as I breathe, as I exhale, my arm is gonna get a little longer. It's gonna relax a little bit on that tricep and then I can reach a little bit further. Take in one more big breath. Now we're gonna roll out to the other side. So we're gonna walk it out. Come out here. So I'm on the, uh, on the left side. This side's not much tighter on me, so my right shoulder's real tight. So I'm reaching out and then I'm gonna breathe. Long, slow exhale. Make sure you relax your face on this. The other muscles in your body will take its cue from your face, Bob, so you don't want to look like someone stabbing you with an ice pick. 
You want to be stabbed with something much more gentle. One more big breath. Yeah. Ah, come up out of that. All right, now let's work on those hips. So we're gonna stand up. So to start, we're gonna do our, uh, what's in our homework for this month as, as we come to a close, squat with hamstring bias. Feet are gonna be shoulder width apart. I'm gonna drop down into the squat. My butt is below my chest. I'm gripping my shoes. I'm pushing out against my knees when I reach up. Inhale, come back down, reach up, inhale, tuck chin to chest, exhale, that's one. Reach up, inhale, reach up, inhale, chin to chest, exhale, keep your hands on your feet. Ow, that's two. The reason why it's so important to do chin to chest when we stand up, it loosens up the upper back, but it also flosses the nerves of the hip and hamstring. And I don't know why it's so effective. Ow, maybe Reba could tell us more about that. Reba, do you do uh, nerve flossing in your practice? Got one more rep. Yeah, a little goes a long way, as you can feel. Looking up, exhale, chin to chest. Okay, so we've loosened up the hamstrings. Everybody feel what I'm saying? Good, good, everyone's really quiet right now. I'll take, I'll, I'll take the time to chat. Now we're gonna attack the groin with uh, one of my favorites and yours. We're going to do a double wide stance, step out, touch down on the side of the, in, inside the uh, lead leg. My palms are in line with my heel. I'm gonna come up my chest, reach to the sky, come back down. I'm gonna crawl out to the center. I'm gonna crawl back in, palms, in line with that heel, slide that hand up, down, back to the center. Holy, you might feel this in your groin, you might feel this in your hamstrings, you might feel this in your back. Bob, can you get those palms all the way to the heel? I dare you. There you go, baby. Up. And we'll do one more on each side. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a very fun uh, super set of exercises to kick us off today. But we're going to warm up the squat pattern and we're going to warm up the hinge pattern so that we can be very effective on this. So you've got your weight, kettlebell, dumbbell. I want you to Set it out. And to start, we'll, we'll work on the, uh, the hinge. But before we even get to that, let's talk about that, that core pillar. So to, to be really strong in the hinge or the squat or anything else, I'm going to gently tuck my pelvis. So I'm going to squeeze my glutes and ever so gently tuck my pelvis. I'm going to depress the rib cage down. So my diaphragm will be facing the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor will be facing the diaphragm. Now that I'm in this column appearance, when I breathe, 
can see my belly expand. So everybody try that right now. Just tilt the pelvis back, put your hands on your hips, so you could, or in between your rib cage and your hip bones, so you can feel that breath go into that belly. Yeah. Good, so you feel that tension. So you're, so you're already in a good spot, and then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna be breathing while you're doing all of this as well. So you're gonna be breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, and I'm going to reach my butt back, touch the kettlebell or the dumbbell behind me, just tap it, squeeze the glutes, exhale on the way up. So I'm breathing in on the way down, out on the way up, and my head is pretty neutral. So my eyes are just gently looking forward, and I'm gonna do 10 reps, squeezing my butt, driving forward. My feet, just barely wider than my normal squat width stance. Pressure on the outside of the foot. Good, nice. You should feel this in your hamstrings, your abs, your butt cheeks. When you get to 10, I'm gonna come back and you're gonna stand over your weight. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but now the weight's under me so I don't have to go as far. Flatten the back. Boom. So dropping the hips, squeezing the glutes. Boom. Eyes about 10 feet in front of you. So you've got that hinge pattern really warmed up. Now we're gonna do some deadlifts. So we're gonna be picking up and putting down that weight. Again, 10 reps. Should be pretty, pretty easy by now. You should be able to feel this in your hamstrings and glutes. Anybody not feeling good right now? No? Good, all right, 10 reps. Picking up that weight, setting it right back down. Just touch the floor, come right back up. Tap, boom, still breathing. Make sure you're exhaling on the way up. That's going to become important soon. Yes. Okay. So you've got your hinge pattern worked out. Now we're going to fire it up for the swing. In our uh, series, we're only gonna be doing sets of five because we wanna be powerful and explosive. We don't want to slow down and create too much muscular fatigue or neural fatigue. So for this, we're gonna do five reps. And when you're doing your swing, I'm gonna pretend I have a kettlebell because you, are, you all have a kettlebell. I'm gonna be behind my kettlebell chest up, I'm gonna grip the head of my kettlebell or the uh, handle and then I'm gonna tighten up my lats, get that neck and spine long and I'm gonna feel that tension in my upper back and then I'm gonna pitch the weight behind me and explode up. And I'm gonna keep that tension for five reps and then I'm gonna set it down. All right, everybody feel in the right spots, lats, everything's feeling good? That's the idea. Okay, so we've got that pattern warmed up. We're gonna do one more set of kettlebell swings. This time we're gonna do 10, and then we're gonna move on to our squat uh, to, to warm it up for our exercises too. So 10 swings, get set up, lats on first. Oh, Jasmine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. <laughs> When I'm setting up for my swing, I'm gonna take it from the floor and I'm gonna throw it high and back. So it's not gonna come down by my feet, it's gonna come up by my groin. And then I'm gonna powerfully swing. So we're going to be doing loaded jumps 
If you're here in the gym, if you're at home and you could do loaded jumps, great. If you can't, you're just going to do speed squats. Same pattern, just less explosion on your, uh, uh, on your feet. But we're going to warm up that squat pattern because it's how we're going to basically jump. So again, all those things I just said with the, uh, the hinge, they apply to the squat. Feet are going to be shoulder width apart, just a little bit less. I'm going to create, a, create that pillar. I'm going to come down. We're going to do five really fast squats. So I'm going to pull myself down into the squat. My elbow is going to look to touch the inside of my thigh. That's going to keep my chest vertical and my hip lower than my chest. And five reps. One, two, three, four, five. Really firing out those glutes. Yes. OK. Now, grab your weight. You're going to do five fast reps again, same exact pattern. Five squats, and go. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you like that, you can do, you can do five fast squats, or you can do two jumps, two explosive jumps. So how that works is you're going to be here, and that's it. So uh, nope. So you do five fast squats, or you can practice your two jumps, but practice them now. So if you're going to do the jump, try it. If you're going to do five fast squats, that's great. Soft landing. Yep, awesome. That's it. Okay, so how this game is played. I love it. 10 rounds. We're going to do your jumps or your squats. So you're, you're going to do your loaded jump, and then you're going to do your five explosive kettlebell swings. It's powerful, as much tension as you can muster. And then you're going to rest for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to have the clock counting down. And I'm going to go with about, about 30 seconds of rest, maybe just like five seconds more. But I'll be at my pace. So if you need a little bit more rest to be powerful, cool. If you feel good, you keep up with me, great. You want to go faster? Not good. As long as you're fast, like your, your actions, we're trying to not rush through the training. We're trying to create speed in the squat pattern, speed in the uh, swing, and uh, the hinge pattern. So don't worry if you are taking time to rest and set up, but be powerful and explosive when you're actually doing the movement. That's what we want. So it's not, we're not in a hurry. We have time. But I want you to get good training out of it. So rest as much as you need. I'm going to narrate the process as I'm doing it. And um, you could do, go with me and go faster, slower. It's up to you. All right, gotta, I got to get some good music going here. Boom. Oh, there we go. Thank you, DMX, for helping me out. All right, loaded jumps, speed squats, and go. So I'm resting for 30 seconds. The key to a powerful uh, swing is you're creating that corkscrew tension, and it doesn't let up. On the way up, you feel your arm getting tight. It whips it back down. It's, you're going to throw it back at your groin. You're going to let that kettlebell or dumbbell pull you over, and then you're going to hit the next series. So tension is important when we're doing this kind of training. All right. Starting in three, two, ha. and then boom, two, three, four, five. 
Not a lot of reps, but put a lot of energy into the reps. So when you're jumping and when you're swinging, force the exhale. So if you've trained with me, you know I make certain noises when I'm lifting really hard. Um, I like to be funny, but you can count. You can count your reps go one, two, three. It'll really get that air out or just grunt, which is uh, Bootsy's favorite thing. All right. Starting in three, two, and go. Emphasize that contraction. Boom. That was two rounds. Coming up on round three. That was the third round? Awesome. Thank God you guys are here. Coming up on round four. So a Tabata is high intensity interval training. This is, it might accidentally be interval training, right? Because your heart rate's going up and down. What we're doing is we're letting the sugar and blood come back into our type 2B muscle fibers so we can be powerful again. So that's why the rest period is a little longer than the Tabata. Because Tabata doesn't matter. You're just training. Well, this is where we want to be strong. So muscles don't need a lot of recovery. Your nervous system needs recovery. That's why you could train, you could run for hours and hours and hours. You can uh, train for a long period of time, lots of reps, lots of squats and lunges. Blood, or the muscles recover quickly. They're very metabolic. Neurotransmitters, they take time to reconstitute. They are powered by magic. I, I don't know, that's as far as I know. I know there's some stuff in there, some chemistry. Where are we at? That was five. <laughs> Bob's in this fugue state where he's. So, one of the things we're doing is we're using peed and, sp peed and power speed and power in different movement patterns, but we're not exhausting that movement pattern. It's an interesting thing, I'm just trying. That was six? That was six, warriors at home. So no training, no training is exclusively cardio. No training is exclusively strength. Everything is, is you know, it's on a spectrum. You can feel this is a kind of a blended spectrum, right? You're attacking big muscle groups. You're attacking primary movement patterns. Uh, and your heart rate might be up if you're anything like me. All right, it's go time. So don't forget water. You got time to drink water. Whew. That was 
of seven. This will be eight. We have three more rounds. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. I could have just one dumbbell and I could live off that dumbbell for a long time in terms of training. As long as you put quality, attention, and effort to what you're doing. We got about 15 more seconds. And then, then we're doing round eight. And go. Two more rounds. Who here is feeling like it's getting easier? No one? Okay. But you're warming up the pattern. The pattern is getting more developed. So as you train and you get through, it's okay. If you start to get faster, if you're feeling slower, drop the weight, do it without weight. But it's okay if it feels a little bit easier. Five seconds. Yeah. Woo. Last set. Boom. But we want to end the speed and power training before you're fatigued, before you start to slow down, before your technique suffers, which is right about now. It's enough sets, really have an impact, but you don't want to crush it. All right. Five, four, three, two, so. Yes. All right. Grab some water. The heart rate come down a little bit. So we've got uh, Another series. So we're gonna do a single arm overhead press from an angle. So this is called a side press. There were a bunch of uh, old school lifts, the bent press, the side press. They're actually about stability and mobility. Um, but it's the kind of thing you would see the circus performer with the two, with the, with the barbell with the big you know, iron or balloons if it's a cartoon, but the iron uh, things pressing from the side. What we're gonna do is, <laughs> we're going to hand on the hip. So start with your weaker shoulder. If you have a shoulder that's weaker, you wanna begin with that. This is our practice round, then I'm gonna show you the circuit, okay? So the dumbbell, the head of the dumbbell is on the shoulder. I'm going to do a side crunch this way. The oblique doesn't train in that direction. It tra it, you'd have to load the other side for this to matter. We are kind of doing that, but it's not an oblique crunch. It's just where with the legs locked, we're gonna reach over and create space for that shoulder to press straight up. Then we're gonna pull it back down as we come back down. So the legs are locked, going straight up, going right back down. Go ahead, we're gonna get five here. 
Yeah. Five reps. Then you're going to stop at the top, and then you're going to walk. You're going to take five steps forward, keep that rib cage down, five steps back, stop, boom, other side. So, side press, come back to the center. Legs are locked, you're squeezing the earth. Side press, back to the center, side press. Three, four, five. Stop there. And then trap the rib cage. Five steps forward. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Rib cage down. Four, five. Boom, boom. And that's it. That's the training. So we're going to do 10 sets and there's not gonna be a lot of rest. If you're too fatigued to do it well, set the dumbbell down, set the kettlebell down. The goal is to keep a moderate weight in play. Two, three, four, five. On the fifth one, nice Bob. Four, five, one, two, three, four, Five, boom, switch, press. So what are we doing? We're stabilizing the hip. We're forcing the obliques. Three, four, five, overhead. We're making that shoulder work. Three, four, five. Notice how your ribs want to flare. They immediately, your whole body wants to get away from that stress. One, two, three. Keep that elbow locked, Bob. Four, crunching out. Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, Three, four, five. One, two, how are we doing, Kyla? Three, four, five. So try to be head on a thread to the ceiling. Tiny steps. It's just about time under tension, creating control here. Two, three. I don't know if you could feel this in the back of your shoulder, but we are trying to create some strength and endurance in those muscles. And teach your spine and your hips to stabilize even in awkward loading situations like we find ourselves in right now. Does everybody else's shoulders burn? One. Just five reps, guys. Three, four, five. How's that shoulder, Bootsy? That's right, yeah. You set it down. What's that are you on, Sarah? So what set are you on? I'm on set two. Damn that walk. I forget about it, then I didn't start doing a sick breath. Four. Five. So, ooh, ooh.
Yeah, baby. Whew. Ah. Two. Three. Four. Five. I've only got two more rounds. Down. Whew. One. Two. It's awkward to do the side crunch and the overhead press together. Four. Feels like I'm doing it wrong. Five. Except for I'm doing it right. How's that shoulder, Reba? Yeah. You can feel it though, can't you? I don't want to stop because I don't want to pick the weight up again. I'm just like, I just want this to be over. Two, three, four, five. Yeah. Almost home, Warriors. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Uh, Bob cursed me with that. Halusa! 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 It's all right. Last set! Come on, Josh. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay. Whew. Yes. Indeed. Ah. Okay, we survived. Ab time, ab time. So there's three exercises. The lateral crawl, the penguin and the military crunch. You have a little weight, you have a small weight. The small weight, we'll, we'll use that in the military crunch. So, There is, you're going back to back with no rest. If you don't like the lateral crawl because of your wrists, you can do the bird dog. So I just want to keep that full body tension going. So it looks like this. I'm going to do 10 of everything. It's only 10 of everything. If it's unilateral, it's 10 each side. So for the lateral crawl, I'll be one, one, two, Two. For the uh, penguin, one, one. For the military crunch, it's just a single, and I've got my weight. It's light. I'm going to go overhead, come back up, sit up, one. Overhead, back up, sit up, two. Then I go right back to the lateral crawl. There's four rounds. There's no rest. Rest if you can't do good work, but just go at your own pace. 10 of each. Lateral crawl, penguin, military crunch. Four rounds. Mm. 
yeah, yeah. When I'm crawling, I'm trying to keep my knees close to the ground. Two, three. I'm trying to keep my back flat. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Ha ha. On my back. One. Two. Now we really are crunching. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> yeah. Get those knees close to the ground, Bob. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Huh. You know what, Warriors? I noticed something. This really adds up. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. When you do those bird dogs, turn them into dead bugs. So get them on the get on your back. The reason the reason for that is I'm focusing on the lower abs with those. There you go, nice Jasmine, good flat spine. One. Who? No. Warriors, who's, who's done with round three? You're on round four? Finish round three and start your homework. We're running out of time. I know I hate to deprive you, Kyla, of the extra training, but just do three rounds and then start your homework with your knee grabs. One. Last set. Last set. Two. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Ha! One. Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. One, two, three, four, five, six, come on, Josh, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. Two, going into the homework. Three, 10 knee grabs. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you're doing the nice, good job on those archers, Sarah, when you're doing your archers, if you're not doing full T-spine push-ups, it's fine. Feet wide, shoulders over the hands. Don't sit back away from your wrist. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ha, ten. Mop it up anyway. Nice work, Bob. Yeah. Warriors. First of all, great job. Everybody kicked ass. There was a lot of medicine in that, uh, in that formula. So one of the things we've been doing over the last few months, years really, but we've been really focused on the last six months is the exercises that you have to do to prevent knee pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, just making you do them a lot, <laughs> a lot. And uh, as, you could, as you felt, when you're holding up your tiny weight over your head, right? There's a, it, it's hard. It's physically difficult to do these things that our body doesn't normally do. That's why we gotta do them. And you did great. And to bring it back to the beginning of showing up with what you got and not needing to be um, perfectly put together, not, not needing to be um, immaculate. Like, like for training, man, I almost never feel like it I enjoy it, but I almost never feel like, oh, my body's ready for 100 you know, swings or 50 swings and 20 explosive jumps with weight. Like That's not how I feel when I roll out of bed. But I, I, do, I do the things that I show up with what I got and inevitably I end up leaving here feeling better than I came in. Hopefully you do that, or you're doing that right now. So just like my friend Tamer Lane, Keep showing up, keep building muscle, burning fat, and continue to bring forth the warrior within. Love you, Heather. Woo! I love you guys. So warriors, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. That's, that's a big deal. Boozy's constantly like, like, you know, people don't like it when they come over to their house and drink their booze and then don't say goodbye. And I was like, what? Ha ha ha!
what? <laughs> shut, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> you don't even know.